Three. I'm here with Staff Sergeant Perkins, recruiting out of North Miami Recruiting Station. All right, man, before we get started, let's do some plugs. Where can people follow you? All right, all right. So if you're on Instagram, please follow me at staff underscore sergeant underscore Perkins. That is staff underscore sergeant underscore Perkins. All right, and what's uh, your phone number? What's a good contact uh, number? Good number to contact me is 305 968 3349. So tell me about Staff Sergeant Perkins. Tell me about where you grew up. Okay, well, Staff Sergeant Perkins was uh, born in Colorado, but raised in Virginia. Uh, my grandma had 14 kids, so I've been a part of the big family my whole life. My dad was in the military, my mom was in the military, so I'm a military brat by nature. I've been somewhere everywhere from Georgia, Colorado, Virginia, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Texas, all over the place. Uh, me, I'm a cool, calm, relaxing guy, very uh, funny, laid back type of person. And I'm very um, just just down to earth altogether. So. so you said your family was in the military. What branch were they in, and how did they influence your decision to go into the army? Yes, yes. So I would say 90% of my family was all army. I had some Marines, some Air Force, but everybody played a part in me joining the army. Uh, of course, my dad. You know, he's a he's a advocate for the army. So uh, talking to my dad and seeing everything that he did in his career helped me pretty much decide on to go to the army. You're a 74 Delta chemical specialist. Can you tell us how you chose this MOS? So when that time came, I had three options. That was between 11 Bravo, which is an infantryman, uh, 42 Alpha, which is human resources, and 74 Delta, which is a chemical specialist. So I did my research on all three MOSs, and I found out with the credentials that I would get in the Army and transfer on the outside that 74 Delta was the best one. And then my background that I'm going to school for has a lot to do with chemicals. So. It all made sense to me. To ensure the safety and protection of troops during combat operations, the Army relies on the specialized skills of the chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear specialists. And now that you're in Miami, how long have you been recruiting down here? Today marks one year, one day I have been recruiting here in Miami. Okay. So so when you recruit and you go to these schools or you meet these individuals, like what do you look for in a potential future soldier? I look for two things, uh, motivation and commitment. I'm looking for someone that's motivated to join the Army and someone that's truly committed to serving their country. Okay. And so one of the things that happens with recruiting is you get very connected with the community around you. Mm -hmm. Going to all the school events, all the different celebrations or things that are going on in your community. With you being from Virginia, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in connecting down here with your community in Miami? Yes. So. Truly, it's, it's just like being back home. Um, everyone out here is nice, f very family oriented. They accept the military. I, I didn't know Miami was very acceptive of the military in general, but they really accept me in the Army and they treat me like family. Um, it was very easy, uh, whether it's meeting uh, the mayor, the governor, uh, police chief, everyone just accepts you out here and they, they accept the Army. Okay, now obviously being a staff sergeant and a soldier of almost a little over 12 years, you were once in the shoes of these individuals that want to go into the military. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your process when you were in their shoes and how that went for you? Yes. Also, how have you used that to make yourself a better recruiter? Yes, yes. So I, I kind of understand where everyone is right now. I know when they first come into the station, they're nervous. Uh, they're probably intimidated. They're probably thinking about getting deployed to go into war. But I will say my recruiter made me feel very comfortable when I, when I joined. Uh, he answered every question I had, made me feel comfortable. And even if I was nervous, um, he, he would introduce me to people that was in my shoes as well. So I do the same thing to my applicants. I make them feel welcome, comfortable, I answer any questions they may have. I let them know that, you know, if you do join, deployment is an option, but just know that the job that you do stateside is the job that you would do overseas. So keep in mind that no one is looking to deploy, but we do have different options out there for you. Okay, so like we just said, like some people might be on the fence, mm -hmm. they might be confused or even intimidated mm -hmm. by this process. What would you say to that person that's sitting on the fence, just should I go in, what would you say to them? I would tell them uh, right off the bat to thoroughly, thoroughly do their research on the Army. Uh, any questions they may have, write them down, do their homework, talk to someone that was in the Army, talk to someone that was out the Army, and then come talk to me about it. And any questions or concerns they may have, I'll debunk it right on the spot for them. Can you tell us a little bit of the different possibilities that are available to, uh, when it comes to working for the Army and the paths that they can take? Yes, yes. So uh, we have the Army Reserve. You want to work along with the Army for one weekend a month, two weeks out of the year, we have the Army Reserve. We work a total of 38 days a year. We have active duty, regular Monday through Friday job. 
Uh, we have, if you want to become an officer, we have the ROTC program that you can pay for school. We have TA, we have the Montgomery GI Bill, basically a free scholarship for you. So you don't have to come out of pocket for anything. Uh, if you want to go uh, AGR, Active Guard Reserve, if you want to stay home locally, work, work from home, you got that option too. It's just so many options that the Army has to offer. We have over 150 career options that you can choose from. And now obviously, in order for these applicants to get those jobs, they have to take the ASVAB first, yes. they have to pass you know, physical tests. Yes. What does the Army offer for these individuals to get them prepared for the ASVAB or uh, physically fit? Okay, so we, uh, the Army offers a few different things. You know, we have uh, different ASVAB study guides that uh, applicants can use. We have March to Success, a very, very great website to use to help raise your score. Uh, we have uh, ASVAB Challenge. It's an app that the Army spends a lot of money on per year to help applicants raise their score. Now, if you're in the Army and you're trying to raise your score, we have VSEP classes that help you raise your score as well, a two-week course and a 30-day course as well. We just added a future soldier preparatory course to the Army's catalog. So if you didn't score so high on the ASVAB, there's a 90-day course that we can send you to in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, that will help you raise your score. Okay, now obviously we gotta talk about these bonuses. What, what, what bonuses are out there right now? Sheesh, so we're, we're offering bonuses up to $50,000. Yes, you heard me correctly, $50,000, okay? So we're offering, um, 50,000, 30,000, 35,000. Look, come, come check it out. Come find out yourself. We're offering different bonuses. For the reserve, we're offering up to $10,000 bonuses as well. So we have different bonuses for different careers out there, different choices for different jobs. Come check us out. Now, obviously, this is one of the most important parts of the interview because we're making these videos so people know who their recruiters are, okay. what they're about. What can uh, potential future soldiers expect if they get you as a recruiter? Okay, well, right off the bat, you guys can expect the best, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good at what I do. Like I told you, I'm a cool, calm, relaxing guy. I'm very understanding. I'm the type of person that will put myself in your shoes to see where you're coming from, to help you understand uh, where you're trying to get. Now, I will say the Army's not for everybody, you know. So if it's not an option for you, that's fine. But I'm still going to help you as best as I can, whether it's in the Army or just other careers out there. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go out of my shell to help you out. So you're going to get the best. You're going to get somebody that's great at what they're doing and someone that truly cares for you. Absolutely. And the final question, man, why the Army? Why the Army? Uh, I can go on for this one. I can go on and on. At the end of the day, can I break it down to you why I chose the Army? Absolutely. Okay, so out of all the branches, this is between Marines, Army, Navy, and Air Force. I chose the Army because the Air Force wouldn't accept me because I didn't score high enough on the ASVAB. The Navy... I didn't want to be on the boat. Uh, Marines, they wouldn't accept me because I broke my arm. So when they didn't want to put in the work for me, I decided to go to the Army. And like I said, my family are all Army as well. Uh, I got to choose my job, something that no other branch besides the Army lets you do. You get to choose your job before you join. And that was the, that was the icing on the cake for me alone right there. Absolutely, man. Well. We'll put up your uh, information one more time, let people know how to contact you. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for what you do, man, because recruiters don't get the praise or acknowledge for the hard work and hours that you guys put in. Yes, sir. So thank you very much for coming. Yes, sir. Thank you.